What's going on YouTube? Jake Teaserborn here and welcome to the third episode of my Marvel Rewatch. And today we're talking about the third film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The... Uh, no... Iron Man 2. And I tell you what, I was very excited for this movie when the first trailer came out. I remember it was on like Facebook. The trailer dropped. I was like, yeah, Iron Man 2, here we go. First Iron Man is great. We're building up to the Avengers and... We're gonna get Thor, we're gonna get Captain America, we're gonna get this and that. And I was like, oh man, this is me. I'm just like nearly 10 years ago at this point. And then Iron Man 2 was announced, I saw the movie, and I just went, eh, eh. Yeah, I don't really like Iron Man 2. Uh, I wanted to give it a chance upon this rewatch because I haven't seen it in like 10 years, and <laughs> there's a reason I don't really watch Iron Man 2 all that much because. I don't really like Iron Man 2. Um, Robert Downey Jr. is back. He's great. The, the beginning of the movie is fine. Like, honestly, until Whiplash shows up at the racetrack to uh, swing his little whips, I'm enjoying the movie. But then after that, it just gets it just gets stupid. And it just really becomes unwatchable uh, by the end of the movie. Tony Stark, he's dealing with uh, a lot of issues. He's got his blood poisoning from the arc reactor, the palladium. So... He has to find some way to stop the blood poisoning from happening. He's got to stop Whiplash. He's got Justin Hammer to deal with. Black Widow shows up for uh, whatever reason to kind of recruit him to the Avengers. Scarlett Johansson's first uh, appearance in this universe. And while she looks great, uh, her performance is all right. She really does a better job in the Avengers than she does in this movie. Pretty much Avengers onward, Black Widow uh, is better fleshed out. But she's fine in this movie. Um, the villain is Whiplash Ivan Vanko, played by Mickey Rourke. Now, this is supposed to be part of Mickey Rourke's big comeback tour because he just did The Wrestler at this point. And, you know, Mickey Rourke, he was on a bit of a career comeback. Uh, he, did Iron Man, he did this one, he was doing Expendables. This was like, oh, this is the comeback of Mickey Rourke. He won Best Actor for The Wrestler or whatever. And then the movie came and his villain is so forgettable. The, the only thing I remember about him is he's got his fucking bird. He's like, I want my bird. A bird, bird, bird. And he's got all this advanced technology, and he's just doing it, and he's using fucking whips. Like, really? He doesn't even have a full-blown suit to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iron Man. And he gets hit by a car repeatedly in the movie and somehow doesn't fucking die. I'm like, he's just... It, what? I mean, Iron Man at least has the excuse he's got his, his armor protection, but this guy? What the fuck? And then, like, the whole, like, reason Tony Stark is able to... I, I never understood this when I watched the movie, when he's able to come and, like, you know, cure his whatever blood disease. Uh, he gets, like, some weird video from his... He finds a weird video from his dad, who apparently worked at, at S.H.I.E.L.D. all these years ago. He gets this diorama, and then Tony creates this impossible technology, which his dad... Which he uses to just map the surface of this diorama thing of, like, the Stark facility, which is, like, the keys of, like, a synthesizing a new element, and I never fucking understood what was going on in the scene. Uh, diorama, Jarvis scans it, he flips it, and it's apparently the keys to, like, a synthesizing a new element. How anybody could possibly figure this out, I have no goddamn clue. It's so confusing. Um, there are some good things in this movie. I, I like Justin Hammer. I think Sam Rockwell was great when he was in it. You know, he's charismatic. He was originally, uh, I think if Downey Jr. wasn't Tony Stark, it was going to be Sam Rockwell, who does a good job in this movie. And there are some funny moments. Uh, Iron Man's first entrance, for instance, he comes out to ACDC. You know, he's kicking ass. Uh, there are some funny, there are some interesting cameos in the movie. Like, uh, Stan Lee's there as Larry King. I even saw Kate Mara, who was in, you know, Fan Four Stick. And I'm just like, oh, hey, it's you. Um, Don Cheadle takes over as Rhodey, and... Uh, oh, God. Don Cheadle's a fine actor. But as Rhodey, he's not as good as Terrence Howard. And Terrence Howard had the charisma, either the chemistry better with Downey Jr. Even, like, nowadays, I still feel like Terrence Howard still is the better Rhodey. Uh poor guy, he blew a major opportunity by not being in the MCU, I really liked him in the first Iron Man, he was funny, he was charismatic, he had the chemistry with Downey Jr. down, but Don Cheadle just looks like he's half asleep playing Rhodes in this movie, and even in the other subsequent movies, like, he's got a few jokes, but I never really got behind his performance 
guys roads. I, I never did. Even now, he just is kind of there to me. I prefer Terrence Howard. That's just me. Okay, this third act, though, this third act is a disaster. Uh, this final battle, it's, again, the same thing. Like, Iron Man and War Machine team up. They both got their metal suits. Uh, Black Widow's there uh, scissoring as many people as she can find. And she's stopping Ivan Vanko's, you know, goons or whatever. And then we get this battle with Vanko unleashing all these drones on Tony Stark. And then we finally get this battle between them and Whiplash. And it's the most anticlimactic battle I think I've ever seen. So Whiplash shows up here. They're just like, oh, he's, once again, dude in a big suit. Uh, Tony Stark has this new element that he uses to fight him. And then him and War Machine fight for like 20, help like fight together for like 20 seconds. And then that's it. He's done. And I'm just like, what was that? It's so anticlimactic. It's so lackluster. I mean, whose ever idea was to just film the ending and just leave it at that should be ashamed of themselves. This is pathetic. This is absolutely embarrassing when it comes to movie ending. It's so anticlimactic. The cli it, it's pathetic. And then you have Nick Fury who kind of just shows up. Now, we knew The Avengers was coming at this point. It was only like two years out. And I was excited for Iron Man 2. Then I just left the movie. I'm just like, uh... No, no, no! Ugh. It just, it just got really, and it's not dumb in a fun, stupid way. It's just dumb in a just lackluster, not very entertaining sort of manner. It's, it's a waste of time. Iron Man Two is complete filler. You don't really have to watch it to understand anything that leads up to the Avengers. Honestly, when it comes to the Phase One movies, you can skip Iron Man Two. You can pretty much skip the Incredible Hulk. Uh, you, watch the first Iron Man so you know who Tony Stark is. Uh, Iron Man, it's just, he overcomes his blood disease that he's got, and he gives one of his machines to Rhodey. Uh, Pepper becomes CEO at one point. He's just more of a dick and, like, an unlikable, like, prick in this movie than it was in the first movie. I thought he kind of overcame some of this, but I guess not. That's just, uh, what do I expect in Iron Man 2? Yeah, you can tell I have a lot more to say about this one than Incredible Hulk and the first Iron Man. I just don't like Iron Man 2. I thought it was, upon my rewatching it, the first couple minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm getting behind this movie, slowly but surely. But as the movie went on, I checked out. I was like, fuck this. I'm done. No more Iron Man 2 for me. I I'm sick of this movie. I'm sick of it. I, I want to just move past the Iron Man 2. I don't want to watch it again. The only reason I'm watching this is because I want to see the whole build-up to Endgame, but there's really nothing worthwhile in Iron Man 2. I guess the only other thing that I found kind of funny watching it was they do show... There was a little editing error I saw with... Uh, they show what YouTube looked like back in 2010. I'm like, oh my god, I remember that! Look at the share button, look at... Instead of likes and dislikes, it was a rating system, so you could just favorite it one star, two star, three stars, four stars, five stars. Uh, that was the most nostalgic... That was the best part of the movie for me is I was nostalgic for how YouTube used to look. So, <laughs> oh, oh man, Iron Man 2, uh, fuck this movie. I, I, I really could care less about Iron Man 2. It, it's one of the worst Marvel Cinematic Universe films. It's a complete waste of time. Downey Jr.'s good doing his thing, but I just feel like the movie, it, it, it's a waste of time. So, that's that. Go ahead and post your comments down below. What do you think of Iron Man 2? I personally don't like it. It... Even back then, like Incredible Hulk I liked back then, now it just kind of feels a little bit lackluster, but Iron Man 2, upon rewatching it, I'm reminded why I don't enjoy watching this movie. It just sucks. It really just sucks. Villains, lackluster. Justin Hammer's good, but it's not enough to save the movie for me. Uh, I, I'm really glad that uh, they, they got better with the Avengers, because after Iron Man 2, which is just a, more of a setup movie and just setting up random events for the Avengers... It just kind of just, it fell apart for me. But I want to know your thoughts down below. Do you like Iron Man 2? Do you think it's underrated? Do you think it's not very good? Let me know so we can discuss it further. And um, be sure to come back next time as we're going to be talking about the original Thor with Chris Hemsworth as the almighty Thor. That should, uh, that should be fun. So, all right. That's all I got to say. Take care now. Bye-bye then. And I'll see you next time.